Dr. Turner, thanks so much for joining us. We have a topic here that is probably the discussion in every marital bedroom in the world at one time or another. Not tonight, dear, low sex drive in women. In medical terms, a low sex drive or a lack of desire for sex is called hypoactive sexual desire disorder or HSDD as I carefully read here. What is HSDD and how common is it in women? Okay, HSDD is a terminology that is used under the old DSM-4, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 4. In 2013, Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 5 by the American Psychiatric Association came out and broke HSDD into male and female. So now, for females, it's female sexual interest slash arousal disorder. So that's the new DSM-5. That's a and mouthful. In, it is a mouthful, yes sir. And let's go over the six definitions that are in that particular, six conditions that are in that uh, disorder. Little interest in sex, few thoughts related to sex, the decreased start and the rejection, uh, the rejecting of sex, little pleasure during sex most of the time, decreased interest in sex, even when exposed to erotic stimuli, and little genital sensations during sex most of the time. Now, HSDD, or the new female sexual interest arousal disorder, is relatively common. Uh, most of the numbers show that maybe a quarter to a third of women experience it sometime in their life, sometime in their adult life. Uh, most of the studies are geared toward women in the reproductive ages, um, before menopause, after puberty. So it is a relatively uh, common condition. So, what causes women to have a low sex drive or a diminished interest in sex? Okay, let's go through another big list here. First of all, it's bad relationships. Okay. The relationship needs to be fixed. And we'll go through a bunch of other things, but if the relationship is not right, then there's no enthusiasm to participate in a relationship that intimate. Nevertheless, there are some other things that can impact uh, HSDD or female sexual arousal disorder, and those would be sleep disorders. There are some medications that cause it, antidepressants, hormonal contraceptives, some blood pressure medicines can cause this. Uh, you can have some uh, uh, disinterest uh, disorders, uh, HSDD, uh, during the postpartum uh, time period, loss of estrogen, you're more concerned about the baby. Uh, relatively common at that point, and that's self-limited. I mean, it'll get better. Uh, Postmenopausal women will notice that just from the loss of estrogen as they get through the change of life. Uh, other things that can cause it include alcohol, or cigarettes and illicit drug use, lack of exercise, and of course stress. So most of these things are lifestyle issues that aren't easily fixed. Are there other symptoms or problems associated with this disorder by whatever label we choose to put on it besides the lack of a desire for sex? Mostly this, this is this, they're, they're trying to define this down to where this is a specific entity so that we can study it and get a better handle on it. Just last August, the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, approved a drug called flibanserin, sold under the brand name, I'm gonna get this right, ADDY, is that correct? Mm -hmm. A-D-D-Y-I, making it, it's the first medication for treating low sex drive in women. What is this drug? How does it work? started out as an antidepressant that they were trying to uh, figure out a use for and they found that in a few select women it did help with women who were experiencing back at that time HSDD and so the company that developed the drug brought it forward did all the necessary uh, challenges that the Food and Drug Administration put out there so that they could bring the drug to market. So it does work in the brain at serotonin receptors. We don't know exactly which ones it works and exactly which way it works, but nevertheless, there are a few women who will benefit from the drug. There have been a number of controversial issues surrounding ADE for the treatment of diminished sex drive in women. Let's take them down the list. Okay. Um, the, uh, it's a very, very hard drug to administer. The side effect profile is, uh, uh, challenging. Uh, you can get low blood pressure, uh, you can pass out syncope, fainting, uh, and uh, use of alcohol 
is absolutely prohibited with this. Uh, you have to be extremely careful as a physician or a practitioner who's writing the prescription that your patient will not drink alcohol because the side effects are, are potentially life-threatening. You can imagine having this all of a sudden, ha having a fainting episode when you're driving home. Mm. That's catastrophic. Um, because of the side effect profile and the caution that the manufacturer wants practitioners to uh, observe with prescribing this drug, there's intense training and monitoring for that. It is a really challenging uh, aspect of a physician's practice to go through, make sure you're monitoring your patients, the education that you have to have in order to be able to write the prescription. So it is, it is a very challenging drug. You just touched on this. Only health providers who've been certified can prescribe ID, and only pharmacies that have been certified can sell it. Is this, that's not common, is it? Is this a common practice? No, it is not. You know, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna sell a new drug out there, you want it being able to be used by anybody. It's real, it's, it's a familiar uh, drug. You, you learn what the side effect profiles are. You learn what the interactions are with other medications. But Addy is, it's different. Flavanserin is a, is a, it's a hard drug to use and a hard drug to uh, administer, and it's a hard drug to follow. You say hard to use, hard to administer. How is it taken? Uh, it is an oral tablet. Okay. I, um, I, when I was assessing whether or not I would add this to my patient profile, I didn't see that I had that much in there. So personally, I, I, I don't know that much about flavanserin. It is an oral tablet. I think that you take it once a day. All right. Well, moving on. Published results have shown that ED is not very effective in treating a woman's low sex drive, and we've just talked about the dangerous side effects. So, as I was looking at the drug, and I saw the likelihood of the women it would help, I flipped the coin. And if I were to tell a patient that I have this drug out here that I can give you but I've got an 86 to 91% chance that the drug isn't gonna help you, and it can cause passing out, it can cause low blood pressure, you could be standing at your sink and all of a sudden faint and fall and crack your skull, and if that was a side effect, pro and even with a little bit of alcohol, you forget you've taken your ID and you go to a party and somebody spiked the punch, and that was just a profile that I just didn't want to deal with. So this is a drug that you do not prescribe? I do not. I. I I honestly did not feel like I had the capability of doing justice to this drug, and so I would refer um, the patient to somebody who is prescribing Addy. Now, there are other things that my patients can, can do if they have low sex drive. And my first thought is counseling. Get in with your counselor, check with your primary care. We have good counselors out here at UT. There are good counselors all across East Texas who can help you with the issues that are really bothering you. You know, the issues are communication, what's happening in the relationship. And I feel like that that is, that is going to apply to so many more women in East Texas than trying to ignore the real problem in most of the relationships hmm. and trying to find a drug that isn't gonna fix what's broken. Well, on the subject of drugs, with respect to men, there are 26 different drugs, Viagra and Cialis being the ones that we all know, that are approved by the FDA to deal with male sexual dysfunction. Only this one drug, ADE, has been approved for treating sexual dysfunction in women. Some say the FDA has a gender bias, is not devoting the resources, is not spending the time uh, looking for medications and, and dealing with uh, approving medications for women. Do you believe this is true? No, I don't. Uh, Viagra and Cialis are doing something, they're just fixing the plumbing. You know, if I'm talking about uh, men, if I'm counseling men, I'm going to say healthy lifestyles. Watch your blood pressure, stay away from diabetes, eat healthy, exercise, avoid cigarette smoking. All the good healthy things that you need to do and make sure that your relationship is still good with her. You know, you know treat her respectfully. Yes, no, that, that's the critical thing there. Uh, Cialis and Viagra just fix the plumbing. I mean, it was a, that started out as a heart drug. They realized that this is one of the side effects that arose when you gave this medicine to people, and, um, and they took it and ran with it in another direction. And the riches rolled in. And it did. Um, I still like the Cialis commercial where you see husband and wife on a retreat 
overlooking a beautiful valley with a, with a, with a gorgeous sunset. They're in separate bathtubs and they're holding hands and it conveys the emotion that's there. He thinks she's the most wonderful woman in the world and the relationship is wonderful. Therefore, he does something to fix the plumbing. Very good. Back on the subject of Ed Eve, despite the controversy, some women taking the drug have seen an improvement in their interest in sex. What advice do you have for women who are considering going the route of this medication? Give with a counselor. I'm, I'm sure the website probably has a list of the people in, in our area who are willing to do that. You, you might have to go into Dallas to find a practitioner who has a bunch of patients who are on this. I would, this is one drug that I would say make sure that the person who is prescribing the medication has an interest in it because if that's the case, then that practitioner is going to be able to figure out when the drug is working, when the side effects aren't worth it, what else needs to be done in conjunction. Let's say you have two aspects of, a, of a HSDD that need to be addressed. This medication may fix one of them, but if there are other things with respect to counseling or relationship that need to be addressed, then that's another. Are there other drugs currently being studied or in clinical trials to deal with you know, the HSDD in women? I, I do. There, occasionally you'll see women coming up with, um, uh, uh, you'll see uh, reports where they're coming up with testosterone and androgens and additive androgens. And uh, I notice that in my patients that if I have taken out their ovaries or they've had their ovaries taken out at some time in their life for some reason, both of them, that they will have an androgen deficiency syndrome. And that figuring out a small amount of androgen or testosterone that you can give in some form actually helps them. My guesstimate is about one patient in six. And those patients really feel better after you add back in a small amount. And mm -hmm. that is something that is real. Yes, there are some people who have that, and I'd ask the patient to consider that with her, uh, with her gynecologist or primary care physician. But on the, on the question, anything in clinical trials that you know of, any specific drugs? As I ran, there were a couple of uh, uh, testosterone components uh, where they're trying to put testosterone with uh, sildenafil. Um, and I think that one concluded in 2013. Very well. And uh, I haven't heard where they're going with the medicine after that. Okay. For women who just don't want to take medicine but still have a problem with low libido, what other help can we offer? Counseling. Counseling, I think, is a critical thing here. I've, I've covered those women who, who will benefit from androgen therapy, from testosterone therapy, after they've had their ovaries taken out. The primary hormone made in the ovary after menopause is androgens. So, so they will benefit if uh, that was a key component of what their ovaries were making for them before they had their ovaries taken out. Very well. Doctor, thank you. Very informative. Okay. Thank you, sir.